This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. More families in Wisconsin are taking exemptions for routine childhood vaccinations than most other states. The state immunization program says about 85 percent of Wisconsin kindergarten students are up to date on their measles, mumps, and rubella shots. The national average is closer to 93 percent. A bail hearing today in Manitowoc in the case of a couple from Two Rivers charged in the death of her three-year-old son, Elijah Vu. Manitowoc County District Attorney Jacqueline Labrie. Well, I will not comment further on the details of the case, I assure you that we remain committed to working with law enforcement to hold those responsible for his death accountable. Katrina Bauer is charged with chronic child neglect causing death and obstructing an officer. Jesse Vang is charged with child abuse and hiding a corpse. Wisconsin's unemployment rate is holding steady. The Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development says the state's jobless rate was 2.9 percent in September. Kamala Harris is warning Wisconsin supporters of what she calls the serious consequences if Donald Trump returns to the presidency, especially since the U.S. Supreme Court granted Trump broad criminal immunity. Just imagine Donald Trump with no guardrails, right? He who has vowed if reelected he will be a dictator on day one. Harris was in Milwaukee, La Crosse, and Green Bay yesterday. Groups are asking the Wisconsin Attorney General to look into intimidating text messages sent to young adults about voting around the state. Molly Carmichael is a recent college graduate and a member of the League of Women Voters. Right off the bat, um, you know, I was pretty upset because I figured this was also going out to um, other people, maybe people who have never voted before and are excited to vote. Jay Heck of Common Cause says he thinks most won't fall for it. I think younger people, by and large, I think are less susceptible to some of this stuff that they see in the texts that they get because they're just more used to social media. The texts warn of fines or jail time for breaking election laws. Critics say the intent is to scare young people into not voting. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WRCE News, I'm Joanne Krulotz. Two reports of white powder has led to an arrest. Tuesday morning around 11.10, the Iowa County 911 Center received a call on County Highway Q in the township of Dodgeville in reference to a suspicious bag of white powder in a mailbox. Then around 12.15, the 911 Center received a call on East North Street in the city of Dodgeville regarding a suspicious bag of white powder in a mailbox. In both cases, law enforcement was able to remove the bag and test the substance. Both bags tested presumptive positive for the presence of fentanyl and cocaine. Tyler W. Marking, 29, of Dodgeville, was taken into custody at 610 Tuesday night. He was transported to the Iowa County Jail, where he remains on a probation hold. Marking was also booked on charges of felony second-degree recklessly endangering safety, felony delivery of cocaine, felony delivery of fentanyl, felony possession of psilocin, and misdemeanor possession of drug paraphernalia. The project team conducted the first bridge demolition blast yesterday morning of the old Wisconsin 130-133 bridge in Lone Rock. Crews will continue removing the bridges and excavating the old roadway corridor the next several weeks. Trucks will continue to enter and exit the work zone at the Wisconsin 130 Long Island staging area access. The north channel of the river remains open. The south channel remains closed. Once crews remove the southernmost steel truss from the river, the south channel will be opened and the north channel will be closed for bridge demolition. This is planned to happen in the next one to two weeks. NOAA's Climate Prediction Center reports there is a 60% chance that a weak La Nina will develop this autumn and could last until March. La Nina is part of the natural climate cycle that can cause extreme weather across the planet. The northern tier of the U.S. and southern Canada could be wetter than average. State Senator Joan Balweg has been honored by the Wisconsin Counties Association with a WCA Outstanding Legislator Award for her work on behalf of county government during the 2023-24 legislative session. The WCA Outstanding Legislator Award is handed out biennially to a select group of legislators who have represented county interest in both the legislature and in their districts. These legislators have demonstrated leadership for counties on key issues, legislation, and the state budget. 
WCA represents the interest of county government both on the state and federal levels and is based in Madison. For more information, visit wicounties.org. Celebrate Creatures of the Night at Fall Fest, a free fun and family event at the Aldo Leopold Nature Center tonight from 5.30 to 7.30. The event is free and features a free shuttle from Ahuska Park. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources reminds hunters and the general public that the 2024 pheasant season opens at 9 o'clock Saturday morning and runs through Sunday, January 5th. The opening weekend has a daily bag limit of one rooster per day. Starting Monday, the daily bag limit increases to two roosters per day. This limit remains in place for the remainder of the season. The DNR plans to stock approximately 75,000 pheasants from the state game farm on over 80 properties statewide. Hunters can use the DNR's Fields and Forest Lands Interactive Game Bird Hunting Tool to locate properties stocked with pheasants. The tool also allows hunters to use aerial maps, topography, and measuring tools to identify areas of interest and make their trips more productive and enjoyable. For more information, including complete pheasant hunting regulations, shooting hours, and helpful tips, visit the DNR's pheasant hunting webpage. And that's what you need to know. I'm Joanne Krulotz. The Bucks lose in Dallas. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Bucks lost their final preseason game to the Mavericks 109 to 84. Doc Rivers says it was important for the younger players like AJ Johnson to get in some playing time with their veterans. Uh, like I look at AJ Johnson, he struggled a little bit today. All that is good for him. The, all the minutes are good. I thought there are spurts or moments tonight where you can see where all of them at, at different points can play. Uh, but for all of them, they just have to learn that you're going to play with Dame and Giannis and um, Brooke and Bobby and Chris Middleton. Uh, they all have to learn how to play with stars. The Bucks season openers next Wednesday night in Philly against the 76ers. College football, the Wisconsin Badgers head to Evanston to play Northwestern tomorrow at 11 a.m. On Sunday, the Packers host the Houston Texans. Rich Basaccia asked, what does he like about their new veteran kicker, Brandon McManus? I mean, what's not to like? You know, he's got a lot of skins on the wall. He's been in a lot of pressure situations. He's had kicks in the Super Bowl. Um, he's played in cold weather. He's played in hot weather. So he's had a lot of experiences um, kicking in a lot of different climates, in a lot of different places. And, um, you know, he's been successful for a long time. So we're glad we got him right now. That's Packers special team coordinator Rich Bisaccia with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Grey's Anatomy is in its 21st season, if you can believe that. How do you keep a show on the air that long? You change cast members, often to keep it fresh. Grey's has announced Sophia Bush will join the cast in a recurring role as a trauma surgeon. The One Tree Hill and Chicago PD actress will make her first appearance this season in Episode 6. Bush has also been busy with a One Tree Hill sequel, which is in the works. In yesterday's beats, I mentioned that Al Pacino almost didn't get the part of Michael Corleone in The Godfather, and then was in constant fear of being replaced by the studio. More from Al Pacino's memoir, which is about to hit shelves, or iPads, has Pacino sharing that between takes while filming the opening wedding scene, he and co-star Diane Keaton were laughing at how they thought they were ruining their careers by doing the film. They both agreed they were part of the worst movie ever made. Al was eventually in the worst movie ever made, but it wasn't until 2011, and it's called Jack and Jill. Sonny Boy, a memoir, is available October 22nd. Bad news from the world of pop music as One Direction's Liam Payne died after a fall from a third-story balcony in Buenos Aires, Argentina, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Payne was discovered while performing in front of Simon Cowell on the show The X Factor, which led him to the band One Direction. Liam Payne was just 31 years old. Saturday Night Live's 50th season is off to a roaring start. A little extra hype thanks to the movie Saturday Night, which tells the story about the moments leading up to the first broadcast of the show in 1975, is probably not hurting. The show's October 12th episode drew its highest ratings in over three years with host Ariana Grande and musical act Stevie Nicks. NBC reports that the show pulled in over 5.5 million viewers for the actual episode and a true 516 million views on social media. The first show of the season featuring Gene Smart as the host and Jelly Roll brought in the biggest numbers for a season opener since 2020. 50 years is not a bad run. Headed to the theater this weekend? Only a few films open in wide release, but two of them are re-releases. The first one is Back to the Future Part 2 starring Michael J. Fox. Many people think the second installment was better than the original and is much better than the third one. The film is being released in honor of its 35th anniversary 
anniversary. Another re-release hitting the screens this weekend is Hocus Pocus. The 1993 film stars Bette Midler and Sarah Jessica Parker. Although critics were lukewarm on it initially, it did very well with audiences and has great performances by its cast. If you're up for some scares, check out Smile 2, yet another horror film that is, so far anyway, critically acclaimed with an 82% on Rotten Tomatoes. And if you're lucky enough to live in a town where a theater is showing Goodrich, you can check out some good old-fashioned comedy drama starring Michael Keaton. The film is not yet reviewed, but could be the perfect recipe if you're tired of being freaked out all month. Let's go to the movies. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Mostly sunny and still a little breezy today. We'll get to the upper 60s for a high this afternoon. Tonight, mostly clear with a low dropping into the low 40s. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, high in the upper 60s to near 70. Then by Sunday, sunshine with a high back into the mid to upper 70s. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Current temp now 37. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 